welcome to Chasing the Dragon Gaming Podcast first ever video overview and tutorial. I'm Ryan and I will be leading you through Virzin Das Volk. It's a game by Pierre Sylvester and Richard Sivel, published by Histo Game. Virzin Das Volk, or We Are the People, is a historical game about Cold War Germany about the period between 1945 until the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. And that was on November 9th, 1989. And just less than a year later, in October 3rd, 1990, Germany was again reunified. Before I jump into the mechanics of the game and, and how to play the game, I really want to set the, the stage or set the scene, set the, the mood for, for the game. To, to really launch you into this, I, I want to take you back to October 3rd, 1990. Back to what I was actually watching on television. Back then. Well, Dan, if you can hear me over this din, it's happened, it's official. Germany is now one country of 80 million people. And considering that the Berlin Wall went down less than 11 months ago, it's happened with such speed that even the Germans themselves are stuck. At midnight, the West German flag, now the flag of all of Germany, was raised at the old parliament building, the first act of a fully sovereign Germany of almost 80 million people, the most powerful country in Europe. This morning, the Western Allies officially gave up the rights they have held in Germany since World War II. A crowd gathered for the last changing of the guard at the anti-fascist memorial, the East German regime's most sacred shrine. It was the ceremonial end of the communist era and the beginning of the capitalist generation. Some were sorry to see the old ways go. One of the last soldiers cried. Then with the now forbidden goose step, they defiantly marched off into history. Once the guards were gone, emotions bottled up for 45 years boiled over. But for most Germans, this is a night to celebrate, not a time to remember the past. Tomorrow, they can worry about the future and the hundreds of billions the new Germany will cost. Tom Fenton, CBS News, Berlin. And actually, the West German player's goal for winning the game is exactly what you saw in that video they are aiming for the complete collapse of the East German state. Now, actually, East Germany is aiming for the same thing. However, that is going to be a very rare occurrence. East Germany, to win the game, only has to survive until 1989, until the end of the game. And the game takes place over four decades. 45 to the end of the 50s, then the 60s, then the 70s, and then the 80s. And each of those decades is actually like a round of, like a whole round of the game. So you go through playing uh, four basically rounds of the game in those decades. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a general overview of the basic mechanics and then go a little bit deeper in explaining trying to explain most of the rules. So here we have the game board map and all the pieces set up. And if you look on the left, you see West Germany and on the right is East Germany. Now West Germany has seven provinces on the main map plus an eighth province, which is West Berlin up upper right hand corner there in the map. And East Germany has five provinces on the main part of the German map. And then again up in the upper right hand corner is East Berlin and you can see that represented there. Now everything that you're going to do in the game revolves around the use of action cards. Every single turn that you have as a player you play a card and with these cards you're really going to be trying to build up your economy, increase your living standards, or deal with the unrest that's starting to develop in your country. To build up your economy, you build either factories or infrastructure. And here we see the ones available to the West. And here are the East players' factories and infrastructure. The East has four different types of factories as opposed to the West's one type of factory. That's because throughout the gameplay, the East factories can be run down or through special action cards, they can get factories in Czechoslovakia and Poland. 
and also a special nuclear power plant that you can build. And the economic power of a factory is determined by the number of working connections it has with other factories. The base value is 1, and you see that 1 is pointing north. Now to add infrastructure, you place the infrastructure there. But now since it doesn't have a working connection with another factory, it's the other color, red in this case for west. Now connecting these two factories, now we flip that over to the proper color for yellow. For the east, the proper color would be red for a working factory. And now since each of these factories has a working connection with each other, the value of each is increased by one. Adding another working connection to the Bielefeld factory will increase its value to three. So every factory has a base value of one. And every working connection with another factory increases that value by one. And when those connections are lost, the value decreases accordingly. And once you started to generate a stronger economy in your country and in each province, you can start to increase your living standards. And that is one of the four standard actions you can take on your turn. Now, in order to increase living standards in a province, it has to have an economic value of three. And the economy of a province is the sum of the economic values of all of its factories. And you can place up to three living standard increases, each of those however, has to go to a different province. And what does that really mean with the, with the living standards? With, if you just look at the living standards counters, it can, see, it can feel very abstract, but look at it in the game and look at it in the historical context. What that means is that in the West, West Germany, they were having like kind of more of an economic development and, and it was kind of booming a lot more than in the East. And if you think about it, if you're a citizen in the East Germany, sometimes they can look over and they see, oh, what are, what are my relatives or what do I see that's happening in the, in the West and what are they getting? Why don't we have those things? Why don't we have like the same kind of opportunity to have cars and these maybe nicer apartments or t color televisions? That's actually one of the cards in the games about color televisions coming to the West. Blue jeans even, that's another card. And what it does is it starts to get people kind of, start to get angry, uh, dissatisfied, and, and it leads to this unrest. And that's the mechanic in the game too, where you're trying to balance, you have to get economic development, you're trying to push towards higher living standards, but you also have to, to watch out for the unrest that's growing in certain provinces uh, of your country. And if those get out of hand, all of a sudden, they turn into mass protests. And four unrest counters on a province will lead to a mass protest. If you get eight, that province will have two mass protests on it. And once your country has four mass protests at the end of the end of the decade check, you lose the game. In the fall of 1989 in East Germany, these Monday protests started in Leipzig and spread throughout the country. The peaceful protest in Leipzig on October the 9th, 1989, is seen as a turning point of the former GDR's fate. To the surprise of many, neither the secret police, the Stasi, nor the army intervened. A month later to the day, and the border with the West opened. But according to Germany's president, without the events of October the 9th in Leipzig, there would have been no fall of the wall in Berlin. The tracks at the top of the board explain three very important elements of the game that are a little subtle in how they are resolved, and those get resolved every end of the decade check. The first track at the top there is the prestige track, and that's signified by the little marker with the leaves on top of it. Both East and West Germany were very conscious of how they were perceived internationally. They thought if they did things like win the Olympics that would make other countries view them favorably, that would increase their standing in the world and their prestige. The next track is the Western Currency track. And that has to do with East Germany having a very weak currency and not really valued on the international market. So that caused a problem for East Germany when they wanted to buy imports and imports were a very important part of the living standards and one of the reasons why the East lagged behind the West in their living standards. The East needs to have at least one 
Western currency for each living standard in every province in East Germany. And for every Western currency East player is short, they must run down one of their factories. And if they don't have enough factories to run down, then they start dismantling infrastructure. And this is one way that can lead to East losing the game. The last track there on the bottom, the pink one, is the socialist track. Now this represents in East Germany how they wanted to build up socialism. 88% of East German citizens at the time the wall fell down would still have voted for socialist or reform parties or the, the old communist party. And these little pink cubes, these are the socialists represented on the board. And East Germany has those and they can be used to kind of quell unrest actually. So the socialists go, can be transported into the provinces in, and instead of adding a, another mass protest, you can add a socialist. And what they do is they kind of, means it's, it's this kind of mood of solidarity is increasing every time a socialist goes on the board. And if at the end of the decade check, the East German player is supposed to add more and they don't have any, add to, any more to add, then actually that ends in the triumph of socialism and East immediately wins. However, if they are supposed to remove pink socialist cubes from the board, if it goes to the left, then East immediately loses and that's socialism fails. On to the action cards now. Everything that happens in the game, everything you do, you do with using an action card. Each round or half decade lasts until all of the seven normal action cards at the top of the board are played. A player turn consists of one thing, playing an action card. Now you can choose to play one of the seven normal action cards at the top, one of the special action cards, only the East player can do that, or play one of the two cards in your hand. And one of the normal action cards can be used in one of four ways. The first is to remove one unrest counter from any of your provinces. The second is to build up your economy by building factories or infrastructure. And the third is to increase your living standard in up to three provinces. And the fourth is to actually trigger the card event. And those are based off of actual historical events. And if you look at the icons on the bottom of the card, those tell you what to do. Now let's get down to dissecting the action cards. There are three types of action cards. And the color of the graphics on the top of the card tell you which type of card they are. If it's red, then that means the card will benefit the East player. If it's yellow, it will benefit the West player. And if it's a mixture of red and yellow, it's considered a dual card and it has both benefits and drawbacks for each player. And just below the graphic is the title of the card and that describes some historical event that happened. And actually, if that is red, that is another way to tell you that the card is a dual card. And the number in the upper left hand corner is the value of the card. Now that can either just have one number or two numbers. And if it has two numbers, the number on the top is a yellow background. And when the West player plays this card, they would use that number. And if the East player would play this card, they would use the bottom number because you could see that has a red background. Always remember, anything that's yellow pertains to the West player. Anything that's red pertains to the East player. And the once a decade special cards that the East player can use, they have a Roman numeral up in the upper left hand corner, and those cards do not actually have a value. And now actually using the action cards. The first action I talked about was removing one unrest counter. And for that you can use any normal card, but not the special action card. Now one thing to think about when you do choose this action is that if you are the East player, if you use a red card for this, then it's free. If you use a yellow card, however, you have to dismantle one build point. That's either remove a factory or remove an infrastructure. And you can't remove a factory if it has infrastructure attached to it. And the next type of action you could take is to build up your economy. Again here, you can use any normal card for this action, but not the special action card. And what you do here is you, you play the card 
and you look at the number in the upper left hand corner and that's the value of this card and the value tells you how many build points you can use and a build point is either building one factory or building one infrastructure and you cannot actually build in a province that has one or more mass protests and that includes any connecting infrastructure those blue lines the next type of action that you could possibly take is to increase your living standard and you can use any normal card to do this and it doesn't matter what the color of the card is or what the value of the card is or what the event things say you can place up to three living standard counters now they have to all be on different provinces and a province can receive its first living standard when it has an economy of at least three and the economy of a province is the sum of the values of all of its factories together okay so what i said before about the action cards and the content of the action cards not relating to increasing your living standards that's not 100 percent true because the value of the card, and remember, if you're west, it's the yellow one if there's two numbers and red for the east. So the value of the action card that you play to increase your living standards can actually be used to temporarily increase the requirement of the economy in order to place new living standards. So this means that, let's say the value of the card that you play is a three. You can use that to help one or more provinces reach the threshold so that it can get the next living standard increase. Now you can split the card value between different provinces, but you can never use more than two points for one province. When you place a living standard on a province, you remove an unrest counter from that same province. And you can do that for every single living standard that you place in that turn. And that can be a very, very powerful tool because you not only get the benefits of placing a living standard in the province, you also remove the unrest. So it's almost like getting a free action in your turn by placing that living standard. So really, 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 especially the West player, do not underestimate the power of taking a living standards improvement for your turn. Okay, so now the fourth and final type of action that you could possibly take with an action card is to play the card and play out the event. And to do that, you simply look under the text title of the card and look at the icons there and just follow the instructions. And on page six of the rule book, there are really great explanations of every single icon that's on all of the cards. Don't forget that any icon that is red affects east and any icon that is yellow affects west. And if there are any arrows, that means that the symbol, which is either the prestige or the Western currency or the socialist track, you move the marker that many spaces to the left or right indicated by the number of arrows in which direction they're pointing. And the player that is triggering the event always determines the sequence in which the icons are executed and where they're executed. And if you can't carry out the action of one of the icons or more than one, then you just ignore it. And if an arrow would take the marker off of one of the tracks, then instead of doing that, you would remove one unrest counter. And if it was the prestige track, you can actually opt to place one unrest counter in, the other players, in one of the other player's provinces. If you trigger an event from a dual card, and those dual cards are the ones that are both red and yellow, you would actually get to ignore one arrow or one icon without arrows. Okay, so we're not quite done yet, but what I'd like to do now is take you through some moves, maybe through a round, and the important thing is that we go through the end of the decade check, because that can be a bit confusing with a lot of things. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so let's start by going over the setup again, just to review. The first thing you do is place three unrest counters on every single province. And that includes Berlin for each player, right? So three for east, three for the west. And these living counters in Berlin, they don't belong to a specific section of West Berlin. They just go kind of general. So whenever you place unrest in West Berlin, it just goes into West Berlin as a whole. Now for the living standards, they do go to the specific sections. That's, that's one of the different things about Berlin. There's a lot of things that are a little bit confusing about Berlin. So for instance, for East Berlin here, you put all the unrest counters in the, the larger box up here and also living standards, but the factory goes down here. So just keep in mind that this factory 
is related to this up there. The next thing you do is place your markers on the three tracks there. Place this marker here for the end of the decade check and place it with the little running dude, which we didn't go over really yet. And this is, the other side of this is after the Berlin Wall is placed, then you put this here like this. But in the beginning, you place it with the little running man, okay? And then down here, another little running man. This is for the flight track. And we'll go over the flight track at, during the end of the decade. So just a little running man down there for, I guess, a running person, sorry. Now I also put two socialist cubes in the socialist box. You notice you have the other ones over here waiting to be, to be placed on the board. And if you ever run out of those and all of those are on the board, then East wins the game. Okay, then there's four factories to be used at setup. And in the East, you place one in Berlin, one in Bitterfeld, in the West, one in Dortmund, and one in Hamburg. And Hamburg is a bit of a special case because Hamburg is not its own province, although you can see that it has like kind of a separate space there. But what it does is actually you can choose for every single action, for every single decision that you make, you can either choose to have its power, its economic power, be placed into the northern one or to the southern province that borders it. Okay? And you, but you, it can only be one or the other. Then what you do is you place seven normal cards up there and you have the rest of them up here waiting to go for the second half of the decade. And you place the special card there. You can see that. Sorry about the shadow. Okay. Remember, only the East player can play that card. And then each player has two cards that you get dealt in your hand. Now I have them shown up here just so that you can see them, but those are kept secret. Okay. So here's the East and here's the West. So that's it for the setup. And that's actually one of the easiest games I can think of to set up for being such a complex game. Okay, so who goes first? The player with the advantage in prestige gets to go first. And the start of the game, it's always the West player who goes first because you can see it's in the green here. If in the later decades or the next half of the decade, this gets moved over here through some of the action cards, then this would mean that the, the East player would go first. But now we start with the West player. Okay, so the West goes first and the West is gonna think well, what action card do I want to play? I have two cards in my hand and I can choose from now. I have seven cards up there in the top. Okay, so I can see that, well, here's a red card, red card, red card, red card, and then two dual cards and only one yellow card here on the table. Now in my card, in my hand, I have a yellow card and a red card. Now this is a really good red card because this allows the, the West, the sorry, this allows the East player to place these factories in Czechoslovakia, CSSR, and Poland, Polska. But I don't want that player to have that, so maybe I would just use this for the build points. That would be simple. So, but I think I'm gonna keep this in my hand, and I'm gonna keep this in my hand. Now what the thing is that I noticed that since, wow, there's so few yellow cards up there, and one, two, three, four red cards, I know that in the next half of this decade, there's gonna be a lot more yellow cards up there, so I can start to try to strategize with that. Now I can choose either to try to hurt the opponent or to benefit myself. Now if I was going to play this card, it's a yellow card, so that's going to benefit me. I can either play it for four build points, that's a lot of build points, or I could, do, I could build one, two, three factories. I can remove uh, an unrest in one of my provinces in Westdeutschland, West Germany. So anywhere in West Germany, that means anything but Berlin. And then I would add an unrest to the east. Now, you know, I think I'm going to do that card because that's a very, very powerful card. It's one of the most powerful cards for West Germany in the first decade. And I'm choosing to play this card, Das Wirtschaftswunder, the Wirtschaftswunder, which has to do with the automotive manufacturing of the West, probably. And uh, I don't know exactly that term. That'd be interesting to look it up. So what this means is I'm going to, I'm going to trigger the event, okay? Instead of playing for the four build, I'm going to be able to build three either factories or infrastructure, remove an unrest in West Germany, not Berlin, and uh, add an unrest to the east. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a factory in Köln and then a factory in Koblenz. And now remember, I have three build points, so I have one more build point. So now I'm going to build infrastructure between the two of them. And since it's connected there, it's going to be an active connection. Then I place the infrastructure there and it's yellow. And, I, and because these are connected together, then each of these factories gets bumped up to two. Okay. So now my economic power in Nordrhein-Westfalen is two plus one is three. So now I know later on, hey, I can 
I can put a living standard increase in there. Okay, and now I can finish off the rest of the actions here. I can remove one of my own unrest and add an unrest to the east. Okay, so I'm going to remove the unrest in Niedersachsen. Okay, so I just take it off there and now you see there's two left. Now I get to add an unrest in East Germany. And where do I want to place that? Hmm. Hmm. I am going to place it in Brandenburg. Okay, so I place the fourth one, but remember, I don't place this here. Why? Because now I have these socialists up here and I can move a socialist cube down here and remove the fourth one. So I don't have to add a mass protest quite yet because the socialists came in and, and calmed everyone down. Now it's the East turn. Oh, and East has in hand two red cards. Wow, powerful. And there's four red cards up there. Now the East has to be thinking, wow, in the next half of the decade, geez, there's not going to be any red cards. There's going to be all yellow cards. So I have to really start planning appropriately. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep these red cards in my hand for the second half of this decade because I know that there won't be so many red cards on the table and I'm going to play one from the table. What I want to do is I want to start building my factories. So here I go. I'm going to play this card, Monetary, monetary Reform in the East. Now what's this going to do is I'm going to be able to, I'm going to trigger the event. So I'm going to play it for build two build points and I get to move my Western currency count, counter to the right. So I'll do that first. I move this to the right. So now I'm at plus one. That's good. And now I'm going to build two factories. What am I going to build? Um, oh boy. I'm going to build a factory in Cottbus. And then I'm going to connect Berlin with Cottbus. Okay, see that? All right, so now what do I do? I move Berlin up to two and Cottbus up to two as well because they are connected and it's an active connection. Now, one thing I didn't say before is after you play a card, you have to place it here at the bottom of the board near the flight track. And so I placed the one from the west here and now the east just went and you place it like this. Now, the important thing is that you see up in the upper right hand corner because if you notice on this card, there's a little flight symbol there, the little guy running. So every time you have one of those, it affects the end of the decade check with the flight track. And now it's the East turn again. And I'll tell you what the East is going to do. The East is going to look up here and they're going to say, wow, there's not too much. There's nothing for me to choose from that would be super great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this away from the red player. I'm going to make it so they can't play this card. And I'm going to play it just for the build points. So I'm just going to use this to build. And this gives me three build points. I ignore everything else on the card. So three build points. Okay, so I'm going to place it down here. I'm going to place my first build point. I'm going to place a factory in Frankfurt, starting with a one. My second, I'm going to connect these two together. So I'm going to go three for Koblenz and Frankfurt is now going to be two. And now for my third build point, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a factory in Mannheim. Right now, so it's the East player turn. He's going to keep these cards for the second half of the decade. I'm going to go over here, Star Protectorate. Hmm, that would be dismantling the West's economic power, which might be good. Here I can uh, initiate, let's see, the Stasi or the Stalinist purges. And then here, this would be, this is a special symbol you haven't seen yet. And that's a maybe, secret police. And that, in the end, at the end of the decade, helps you remove some unrest, um, but it has some negative con consequences as well. I think I'm going to go to the SAR Protectorate and I'm going to start dismantling the West. So this one, the SAR Protectorate, I can dismantle two build points from the West and add a unrest in the West and also move the prestige towards the East. Okay, so let's do that. Place the card down here. And move, first I'll start with moving the prestige towards me. Okay, as the east. Um, dismantling a factory, no, or infrastructure. What would be the most damaging? I'm going to say that this right here would be the most damaging. Why? Because if I remove this, this brings Kun down to one. And, and then this province is instead at three, is only a two. And this province instead of three is at two. So they not, so the West won't be able to build any, or increase any living standards. So I'm going to take this away. It's the most strategic. So this down to one and this down to two. Because remember, there's still one working connection there. Okay. And, okay. And 
let's see. And now add a unrest somewhere. Now, actually, I could add an unrest to the West and we'll give them a mass protest because there's several provinces that have three. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that here because this is going to be quite powerful because now they won't be able to build here and they'll be really handicapped. Because remember, you can't build for in, a, in a province that has a mass protest. So I put the first mass protest here, which is no. Could also be kinda, but I'm going to go for no. Okay, so no. All right, now it's the West. And boy, the West is a little upset. Uh, the West really needs to get rid of that uh, protest. But uh, I don't see any way to do that because I have this card, which I want to keep because it's pretty good. And these can't really do anything. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this card here. And because it's a duel, I can use it to remove one unrest. So I'm going to use this just to remove one unrest. Place this here. I remove the unrest here, and now because it's down to three again, I get rid of my mass protest there. Okay, so now it's the east turn again. Again, I'm going to keep these to the next. Okay, and what am I going to play here? Um, hmm. I'm going to I'm going to have a little bit of fun here, and I'm going to play this card, and I'm going to play it as the dual event. And I'm going to because remember I can ignore one arrow or one icon. I'm going to ignore this arrow so I don't have to move the prestige towards the west and I'm going to add a protest. Now if you see this little symbol up here, uh, can't see it, it's a symbol of East Germany. So that means that East Germany gets to decide where I get to, where I place the, the unrest counter. And this was even, even if the west had played this card, the east would have been able to decide that. So I'm going to place this and I get to place unrest here again, and so we add this back. So that's a lot of fun. Okay, so it's kind of a little back and forth. So now the West, I think the West is going to say, hmm, that's a pretty bad card. And the thing with, if you play the last card in a half decade, then the other player goes first. So the West is thinking, well, I, maybe I'd like to go first. I'm gonna play this card from my hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place, I'm gonna trigger the event, West Germany granted sovereignty. So, and that was in 1955. I'm going to build two either factories or infrastructure and move the prestige counter to the left towards me. Okay, so I'm going to place this down here again and I'm going to start with that, move that. So now it's in the middle again, but the west has the advantage in the prestige. Now, what I'm going to do is I get to build two. Hmm, now I can't build in here and I can't build this or this, 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 anything connected to the mass protest, you can't build. So, geez, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go down to here and I can build two. I'm going to build this here, oops, like this, so that now this is a three, this is a two, and then I can also build one up here, okay? Okay, so now it's the west, the east again. Again, the east is going to keep those. And the east is going to play this card to end the half decade. So this is the Stasi founded. And the east is in fact going to found the Stasi and trigger the event. So what happens is because this is this kind of secret police card, I actually, when I trigger this event, I place it over here on my side and now this is going to be active for the rest of the game okay so what i do is i, I remove an unrest from somewhere let's say i'm going to remove it from berlin okay and then it's a secret police it means i play it as a secret police and i move the prestige one towards the east okay so here we go back to here so now the east has the advantage again in prestige okay so now with all of the Card, normal cards played on the uh, top there on the board. Uh, the half, the first half of the first decade is over now. Okay, so now what we do is we just take these cards and we'll place seven cards down there again. Okay, here are the new cards for the uh, second half of the first decade. And wow, West Germany is really happy. You got one, two, three, four, five yellow cards for West Germany. 
and only one card for East Germany, two cards, sorry, two cards for East Germany. This is a really good card for East Germany, but they would have liked that in the first half of the first of the decade. Okay, and since East player went last in the first half of the decade, then the West player goes first. Okay, so the West player is probably going to keep this card in hand because there's so many good cards up there for West to choose from. Oh boy, what is West going to do? Hmm. I think that a really, really, these are really powerful cards, dismantling industry in the East or creating an uprising. Uh, um, I think what is going to hurt East more is to dismantle this. They're going to activate the dismantling industry in the East. So I'm going to activate, I'm going to trigger the event. So dismantle three industry, cause one unrest and move the socialist marker to the left. Oh, this could be really damaging to the, to the west, to the east. I think the east is, is in trouble. Okay, remember I put the card over there. Okay, so what do I do? Dismantle three industry. That's gonna be pretty easy. I'm gonna take one, two, and three. And now East Germany is left with only one factory, only one economic power, and that's really, really damaging to them. Now it's the, oh, not, not, it's not the East German turn yet, because in the card, if you could see, can also add an unrest and move the socialist marker one over. So we move the socialist marker one over, and now I'm gonna add an unrest to, doesn't really matter at this point because I put it up here, and instead of doing that, of course, we move a socialist over here. Okay, East turn now. They're not gonna use these cards yet because they are afraid that this card is gonna disappear because West next turn could possibly take this card and say, I'm just gonna play it for the build points um, and the East would lose this card. The East really wants this card. Last chance for East to build factories in Czechoslovakia and Poland. So the East is going to trigger this event. And so now the only way to build factories here, 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 and here is to use a card like this. The other card is in West's hand. East doesn't know that, but it doesn't matter because it's either in the hand of the West or in those two cards up there. So here we go. I get to build a fact four factories here. Um, I have to add a protest because this is joining the Warsaw Pact and maybe people were, uh, not a protest, sorry, an unrest, people were a little upset with that. But then the prestige goes more towards the east, okay? So here we go, add these factories, and I place that card there again. Um, the factories are here, so I do one, two, three, four. Now these factories are great because these factories can be used to add economic power to either here or here, anywhere where they have a connection. So each of these factories can, can add power to two different provinces. And this one is to either Berlin or to Brandenburg. And this one is to Brandenburg or Mecklenburg, Vorpum, Vor, Vorpommern. I'm sorry, I haven't taken German since uh, 12 or 20 years ago. But now I have to choose to add an unrest somewhere and, and then move the uh, prestige marker towards me. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to move the prestige marker over there. And I'm going to choose to add unrest. Uh, let's put it in Berlin. Okay. I'm going to add the unrest there in Berlin. Oh, and since I don't have any socialists left, that stays there. Okay. So now I have every single province has three. So now, boy, the uh, the... Oh, I could be in trouble here. The, the West could really mess me up. Okay, now it's West's turn. Oh, and the West, I think, is going to mess up the East. Look at this. They're going to add these four, oh boy, four unrest and maximum two unrest in one single province. So, okay, I have, can do two. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put one in four different provinces and also move the socialists over. Man, I think, I think they're going to really be crippled. It's the 1953 uprising, and that's going to be really great for the West. So here we go. Move the, the socialist over here, and oh, doo -doo -doo. Brandenburg. Um, Sachsen, Anhalt, Berlin, and um, let's put it down here in Sachsen. Okay, and now, holy cow, I have four mass protests. We are the 
people. Okay, so things look pretty grim for the East, you would think. But what is the East going to do? After the 1953 uprising, they are going to bring in some Russian tanks. They are going to, they're going to squash this protest. And what it, this, is a, this is a special thing in this card. And this is a, a great card because what you can do is you could actually wait until the very last card possible to play. And uh, you could play these. And this means this removes a mass protest. And it brings down all of the unrest down to three. So if you have, let's say, um, six mass protests, you can play, play this and it would be removed down to three. Uh, and get rid of the mass protests. So here we go. I remove two mass protests and two unrests, and move the proceed because uh, to towards the west because that wasn't so so great in international eyes. Bringing the tanks and then move the socialists to the right. So I'm going to move the socialists over here. Move the proceed over here, and um, I'm going to remove we. Get rid of that too. Are this and then of course. The other two uh, that I'm going to remove, the two unrest, is here. So get rid of the and people right there. So now in one move, the East has gone back to having no mass protests. And that was very, very effective use of that special card. All right, now it is the West turn. And the West is going to, I think, going to just do monetary reform in the West. And they're just going to start to try to build up their uh, economic factories and so forth. So what, I, what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove an unrest, okay? And the unrest is going to be here. So now I remove my mass protest, and now I can build in here again. And now I can build three econ uh, build points. And so I'm going to build this here, put this back here to two, two, okay? And I got two more. So what I'm thinking about in the future, uh, in the next move, I'm probably going to increase my living standards. I really have to. So what I'm going to do is I notice that this has four, this has two, this has three, and this has two. So what I want to do actually is I, if I put a factory here and an infrastructure here, these are connected. Now, look at this. I have one, two, three, four provinces where I can put living standards in and that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. So here's the question. Do I want to use one of these cards yet or do I want to found the go, go for the founding of the FDJ? Hmm. I do want those socialists because right now I'm at a negative one socialist and that's going to be bad. Um, hmm. But here the problem is that this is going to add unrest. I could remove that unrest with my Stasi that I found it because remember, I can still remove one unrest at any time with this during one decade. I am going to play this one. I'm going to do the forced merger of the KPD and SPD. And that, I believe, is the Communist and the Socialist Parties in East Germany. So we're going to play this for the event because I want these socialists to go up. So I get to build a factory and I have to add an unrest and move the socialist marker up twice. Okay, so do that first, uh, add a factory. I'm going to add it back to hmm, Berlin. And then I have to add an unrest somewhere. And I'm going to add that up here. Oh, and that gives me a Wii. Oh. And now the, the West is going to actually play. Oh, they're going to play this card. They're going to play this card to take it away from the East. So the East is going to be in some trouble. And they're going to play this card just to be able to add their living standards, increase the living standards. So they're going to play this card. I'm going to put it down here. Look at all the cards down there. And now we're going to add living standards to where I said I could. So here's the thing, though. I can add a living standard here. One, two, and I'll add it here for three. Now, if this had been higher, if this had been six, the second living standard I could have added to their West Berlin section, which is the British flag, because this is what's called a supplier. So this part of West Germany supplies with the British flag, the British flag section of West Berlin. Remember that these uh, uh, 
unrest counters are in West Berlin in general, but a living standard would be specific to the sections. So the East has to think, if they play the card from their hand, then they will actually get to go last, right? But if they don't play the card from their hand and play one of these cards, then the West player is actually going to get to possibly play last. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I think I'm going to take the chance and I'm going to build this. And what it's going to do is I'm just going to use it for the build points, just for two build points. I'm also taking this away from, from the East player, from the West player, I should say, sorry. Okay, so here we go for two build points. Put this over here. Uh, two build points. Um, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in uh, here. No, I can't. Yes, I can put this here in Schwedt. Okay, one and uh, two. Okay, so these. this is up to two and this is up to two. So now if you look at this, um, actually, Berlin and Brandenburg have a power of three because this can contribute to here and this can contribute to there for the living standards if I so choose to add living standards there. Now the West player um, is not going to play this card because they don't want to remove a factory and add an unrest just e even if they gain the prestige because this would be reparations agreement with Israel. I think what the East player is going to do is they're going to play this card and force, uh, possibly force the East to play the last card there. And they're going to play this card, of course, just for the build points. Okay, so build up their economy a little bit more. Um, what am I going to do? What do I want to do? I want to add this to here. So this is two, two, and then I'm going to add factory in Hanover. So now this province, uh, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add this factory to uh, Kiel. So now uh, these, both of these provinces can start to possibly get um, living standards. Now the East is actually going to play this card in their hand and they're going to they're gonna play it for, they're going to build up, planned build up of socialism for 1952. Looks like uh, Karl Marx there. Um, so they're going to they're gonna trigger the event, they're going to build two, add an unrest and move the socialist over one. I'm going to choose to do the socialist over one first. Um, what I'm going to do is, now, since I have this Stasi over here, I can use that to remove one unrest. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this one unrest here, and that helps me remove my mass protest. Put that there. So now I can actually build there. So one of the two places I'm going to build could, should be, hmm, where do I want to build? Um, I tell you what, I'm, going to, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to build here. One, and then I'm going to do this, so that this is a two, and this is a three now, Berlin is a three. And now I have to add an unrest, and boy, where am I going to add that? This is going to be really hard. I'm going to put it down in Sachsen, because I'm not really using that or anything for right now. So I'm going to go there, and then maybe it's appropriate, because Leipzig was a place where the big mass Monday protest started. The West has no cards in hand, they have to play this card. And they are going to play the card to... They're going to activate the event. They're going to activate the event. Okay? So they're going to... Because they want this, they want the prestige. They move the prestige over 1-2. And they have to add a protest. But uh, that's not going to be too big of a problem because this one only has two. Right? And now they have to dismantle an in industry. And they're going to dismantle this one and bring this down to one and this down to one because they weren't using that anyways. So the first decade is now over because the last normal card has been played. There's no more normal action cards left on the top of the board there. Okay, so now what we have to do is the tricky thing of going through the end of the decade checks. Okay, so it's, it's laid out here. You just go through one by one doing all the checks. So I think some people have some confusion about exactly how to do that. So we'll, I'll try to go through pretty thoroughly here. So the first thing you do is here, you look at this, and since I haven't built the Berlin Wall as an East player yet, this is not like this, it's the flight person. And what, is, what does this mean? It means that um, before the Berlin Wall was, was created, a lot of people fled over, let's say, to West Berlin from East Berlin, 
or they were like fleeing over to West Germany because if they were unhappy trying to get over there. So this is what that symbolizes. So let's go down here and you have to go down to the flight track. So the flight track is also laid down here graphically, pretty graphically clear. The first thing you do is you count all of the little flight symbols on the cards that we laid out here. And that's why we laid these cards out here. So if I look down here, none, 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 nope, two, two here. So I move this one, two, okay, uh, one, one, and one. Okay, so now it's at two. Oh boy, okay. Okay, so the next thing is how many secret police? Oh, East has one secret police. So we move it like this, okay? Now the next thing is the maximum number of living standards in any West province. So the West has three provinces with one living standard. So that's one. So it moves it one to the right. And the minimum number of living standards in East Germany, which is zero because they don't have any. So that doesn't move at all here. And if any of them have any protests, uh, West has, the East has one protest. Oop, unfortunately, that moves over here. And the West has zero, so that doesn't move over back over here. The number is three. It, three and a half doesn't mean anything. It's just three. It would have to be up here to four to get to four. Now that means the East now has to dismantle three build points. So either infrastructure or factories. And the player with the prestige advantage gets to choose the first one to dismantle. And so that's the West player, and the West is going to dismantle this one here. So now Berlin gets down to two, and Schwedt gets down to one, and the East goes for the next one, and they're going to just dismantle this. So it's down to one, and it's down to one, and now West gets to dismantle the next one, and they're gonna take away Berlin, okay? So that just is gone. And now we move down to the prestige end of the decade check, and what we do is you look up here at the prestige and West has a prestige advantage. If this had been higher, let's say here, the player, the West player would get to choose one of these things to do, either to run down one East factory or to add a, a unrest to the East somewhere. So, but it's only here. And so the West gets to choose to run down one factory in uh, the East. And they are going to run down, the run down is this one, remember? They're going to run down Magdeburg. So I just replaced that here. And now the thing with the run down is it's like a negative one power. So this is actually a power of zero right now, you can see. Sorry, the glare, zero, power of zero. So now we go to the Western currency. And right now, it's at plus one for the East. Right now, the East doesn't have any living standards. So this Western currency check doesn't really play any kind of role in, in this. But if, if, the, if the East did have a living standards, they would have to support those. And now they would support that by having plus one. So they would have, they would have a starting of one value. And then they would think about their exports. And the export value of each province is the highest value factory in that province, only that. So they actually have a one and another one, so that's two, because this is zero, so it's just the highest value. Even if this had, was also one, which it was before, it would still only be one, because it's the highest value, and that's the export factory. Now these in um, Poland and Czechoslovakia, they don't count towards this at all. So the East right now could actually support three living standards, but they haven't, they haven't done any yet. Now here are the secret police. So for every secret police card that the East has, and the East has one of them, they have to dismantle one industry. And now here's the thing about rundown factories, you can never dismantle them. So the East is going to dismantle Bitterfeld. Not looking too good for the East, I have to say. I, know, I haven't played them very well this game, so don't, usually they're, they're much better. So now we move down to the living standards, holding your living standards. Okay, so there's three, checks here for living standards. The first one is hold your living standards, right? So this one, okay? So since the East doesn't have any, we're just looking at the West. And the West is looking over here and saying, well, I have one, two, three provinces that only have one. So the export factory in each of these provinces, the number value of that needs to be equal to or exceed the number of living standards. 
So they're all fine because this one has a value of three. So this one could support three living centers. There's only one, so that checks out fine. This one has a value of two, it's the export factory. Um, they can support one living, uh, they can support two living centers, they only have one. And here again too, this export value of this province is two, so they only have one. But if, let's say if this province had three living standards on it, and the export value is only two, they'd have to remove one of those living standards. The West doesn't have any living standards in Berlin yet, in West Berlin, but if they did, the total number of living standards in West Berlin could not exceed the lowest export value of one of the three suppliers. So this one, this one, or this one. So right now the lowest value is two, right? Because this one has three, the export factory is a three, and this one is two, and this one's a two. So there could be up to two living standards in West Berlin supported. Okay, now we move down to the internal comparisons of living standards. And that means that you just look basically at your highest living standards province. And in this case, West Germany has one is its highest and East Germany has zero. So that's no problem for East Germany. But if West Germany, for instance, if this one, if Rhineland Pfalz had two on here, then we'd be looking at two. And then you would look at all of the other provinces. And for each province that had more than one difference, you would have to add an unrest to that province. So if Rhine Rhineland Pfalz had two, then this province, this province, this province, this province, and this province would all add an unrest. And that would actually cause West Germany to lose the game. And I did lose the game once that way in the first decade. Uh, so that's something really be careful about that. So but since this only has one, there's no problems because uh, it has to be two less. Okay? And if it was three less, then you would add two unrest to that province. Now we move down to the east-west comparison. This is where people from both countries look at the other countries. And, oh, what do they have? Uh, are they getting kind of dissatisfied with what's available in their own country. This is actually where you get to attack the other player directly. So the living standard has to be adjacent to another province of the other country. So these two can't attack anything because they're not adjacent to anything else. But Hessen can attack either Thuringen or Sachsen-Anhalt. Okay, so what are they going to attack? I think I'm going to attack Thuringen. So what that does is, since I have one more living standard than them, oops, I get to add one unrest. And what does that add? A mass protest because it has four unrests. Okay, but that's the only other thing I could do. If I had a living standard in Berlin, West Berlin, I could attack both Berlin and Brandenburg. And you actually get to do two attacks with West Berlin. So having living standards in West Berlin is quite powerful. The next thing is to execute police powers. Now I look over, oh, the East has one police power card, but I've already executed that. And I know that because when I remove the protest or the, sorry, when I remove the unrest from the board, what I did was I placed it on the card to know that I've already used it this decade. Okay, so I can't do that. So it's already been done. Okay, so now we go down to here and we get uh, socialists. So we look at the socialist track and, um, okay, I get one extra socialist. So that's nice. I get to move one pink cube here. But what do I do instead? Instead of putting it up here, I'm going to move it down here to remove this uh, mass protest down there. Now the last thing is, wir sind das Volk? It's a question because it says, if there are four mass protests on either side, that player loses the game with their state collapsing. If you look in the, on the board here, the East only has one of them. Okay, so the video is about an hour long now. I've gone through the basic rules and gone through the run through of the first decade. And I hope that this has maybe cleared some things up for you and helped you kind of get jump right into the game. What I'd really like to do, and I'm not promising this very soon, but I'd really like to try to do a complete run through probably with another person because as I play alone, I don't really think strategy so well 
and I'd like to give you more of an overview of the gameplay for real uh, this time. So next time, I mean. So thanks a lot for watching, and um, please visit our podcast page on SoundCloud, Chasing the Dragon Gaming Podcast. And we are also on Facebook, again, Chasing the Dragon. And um, yeah, I'm Ryan. This is Leo. Thanks.